have, uh, we are on time uh, to finalize uh, the Ford presentation about the non-invasive uh, positive pressure ventilation in uh, the post-operative period. As you see on this slide, I uh, focus and I summarize the rationale for use NIV in post-operative period and uh, with Emmanuel we try to perform a slide that summarizes the major modification as you see here. You have the effect of the residual effect of anesthesia and analgesia drugs, the decrease of cough, the pain, the surgery uh, aggression, and all this induce a restrictive syndrome of all volume, including the tidal volume, the FSC, and all the volume. And this is associated to a diaphragm dysfunction with atelectasis. And a vicious circle will develop, uh, as you see, with uh, restrictive volume syndrome, diaphragm dysfunction, and atelectasis. Moreover, all this leads to hypoxia with respiratory failure, and as you know, the bed of uh, the pneumonia is the atelectasis. And this is also increased with the fluid overload in some patient. All this modification could explain what happened after surgery in our patient, and especially for the most severe. And then we should try to help their respiratory muscles using machines for try to uh, supply the, uh, the pump function. On this slide, you have the different ventilatory support management after surgery to prevent reintubation. You have two types of approach. First is the curative one. The curative strategy is applied when acute respiratory failure is present, and the objective of application of non-invasive ventilation is to avoid intubation. However, in the prophylactic way or preventive way, you applied very early the non-invasive ventilation when acute respiratory failure is not present, and now your objective is to avoid the development of acute respiratory failure. That means you are a step before the development of acute respiratory failure. In both approaches, you could apply third strategy. First of one is the high flow oxygen therapy as developed clearly by Francois. The high flow oxygen therapy could be considered as a CPAP-like but ver with a very low positive pressure. Not a real CPAP, but a CPAP-like. The second one is the real CPAP one, which is continuous positive airway pressure. When you have one level pressure, it's mainly an end positive expiratory pressure. For this, you don't need an active machine, just a machine delivering a high flow. And the last one is the non-invasive ventilation, often called the BiPAP, and this uh, strategy uses two positive pressure. One is the passive one, the PEEP or CPAP, and one is often used in pressure mode, which is pressure support ventilation. And as you see on this slide, you could use it for the both situation, the curative situation, as you see, and the prophylactic one. Or in the real life, you have often a gray zone that's not clear cut to say the patient is in curative or prophylactic. <coughs> and then the major five keys for NIV success, first is the right indication. Today, in the post-operative period, we have strong data suggesting that after surgery very close to diaphragm, such the thoracic surgery, the cardiothoracic surgery as developed by uh, the team of Francois, the abdominal surgery, we have strong data suggesting that both prophylactic and curative NIV could be useful. Second, this is very important, uh, as stated by uh, Emmanuel, the expertise and the experience. The skill of the team is probably one of the major factors that could influence the success of the failure of NIV. Then the third, sorry, is the correct setting of the ventilator. As you see, the correct setting means the same strategy that developed by uh, 
Emmanuel, you should always please limit the pressure insufflated to avoid the leaks. Using low leaks, applied low pressure, you could improve the comfort of the patient. Moreover, you should limit the tidal volume. Some recent data suggesting that if you applied high expiratory tidal volume, please consider always the expiratory tidal volume, probably more than 10 and probably 9 milliliters per kilogram could be associated for more failure, especially due to the volo and barotrauma. You need also to have the good material, including the good ventilator. If you can have dedicated non-invasive ventilator, probably the best. You should try to have a large choice of interfaces, as uh, stated by Francois, the different interfaces, what's the facial mask, the helmet full face mask. This is very important. And in some case, nasal could be enough. And please consider a good humidifi humidification of the devices. And uh, uh, finally, please consider also to stop early the non-invasive ventilation if you don't have improvement or if uh, you should intubate the patient, please not delay the intubation procedure. This slide summarizes the five main ventilatory settings to uh, consider using non-invasive ventilation. The first one is uh, the uh, inspiratory trigger. The trigger is uh, for the machine, the level that uh, the machine could deliver the positive pressure. In the best machine, it will be set at the most sensitive value without auto-triggering, or please consider in a simple way, minus one or minus two, both in flow or pressure, um, trigger. Secondly, you have the slope. Consider a median slope uh, or maximum value. You have uh, the pressure support. The pressure support uh, is uh, around uh, 5 to uh, 15 centimeters of water. You see here. And the fourth is the expiratory trigger setting which could allow to the ventilator to detect the end of inspiration of the patient and then stop insufflate and open the expiratory valve to allow the patient to exhalate. And this could be uh, set in the new generation of the ventilator, as you see, at uh, a level of uh, 50%, sorry, 50% of the cycling expiratory flow instead the 25 in the um, ventilator usually setting. And then the new generation of the ventilator, you have access at a new parameter, which is the maximal inspiratory time, and set this one between one second to 1.2 seconds, which is a physiological um, inspiratory time, and the PIP level could be uh, set between five to 10 centimeter. And this is very important to never exceed 20 centimeters in this set. When you add pressure support and PEEP, please never exceed 20. More than 20, you could have, you could have some gastric insufflation. And uh, this is my last uh, slide, um, if I can do it. This is the take home message, please. Two main messages. Always in post-operative period, if you have a patient with acute respiratory failure, please, you should always eliminate a surgical complication. This is the first, the first cause of post-acute respiratory failure. After eliminate a complication, you could consider pulmonary embolism and the other uh, cardiac problem and then. The second one, you should probably consider, as stated by uh, Francois, high flow oxygen therapy or NIV, but please never, never um, delay the time of reintubation. And uh, please consider this last slide. If you have an improvement of the patient, or you could continue to use NIV, if you have no clinical and gas improvement, please stop and intubate the patient. This is my main message. Thank you for this. Uh, you're listening. Thank you. I have a short question. Uh, what about non-invasive ventilation in obese patients? Do you think uh, it would be particularly efficient in these patients? 
this is a good question because as you said that obese patient population increase, we have more and more obese patient. Today we have uh, some physiological data suggesting that in this uh, uh, selected population of obese patient, probably non-invasive ventilation could be uh, useful. Uh, the team of Francois showed that uh, high flow oxygen therapy have very good results in uh, obese patient after cardiothoracic surgery, but we have just physiological data. We don't have today a uh, randomized clinical trial uh, giving us some strong data that uh, we should use. We could consider today probably, but uh, some uh, randomized trial are ongoing. We have one minute to conclude. Yes, I have another question for you. You, you mentioned that the tidal volume should be less than nine, eight milliliters by kilogram. But sometimes, despite the very low level of inspiratory pressure, we have high tidal volume. What is your recommendation? Should we stop the NIV? What, 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 what we should do? This is a very uh, clear question. I think if you have this problem, you should consider if, uh, if NIV is a good indication in some situation. If you cannot have the compromise between low pressure associated with limited tidal volume, less than 10, I think, expiratory tidal volume, this is very important. If you don't have this, probably reconsider your indication. Now we have time just to conclude. We have uh, 10 seconds to conclude. I want to thank all uh, the speakers that uh, their presentation, and I hope uh, that everybody is uh, thank you. Thank you very much, and enjoy your uh, ISFAR Congress uh, for this year. Thank you.